On November 8, 2013, near Alishville, Alabama, there was a horrific train wreck that sent fireballs and explosions into the night. All the community was told is that it was crude oil, it was confined, and there was no threat to the environment or human safety. A few days later, Scott Smith from Water Defense showed up with a product called Opflex to donate and deploy. This is how we were met. And who are you going in to see? Well, we're just kind of exploring. Kind of okay. exploring? Yeah. Can't explore, sorry. You Can't are, go back there. Um, is this a public road? It's a public road, and if you go back there, I'll call the sheriff on you, the FBI and the FRA are all back there, and no traffic is allowed except locals that own, that own property here and the people working on repairing the railroad. Okay. So that's the story. That's a pretty serious threat. It's not a threat. I'm just telling you what my instructions are. That's all. And you are with? I'm with the railroad. You're with the railroad. Would you like to have the FBI talk to you or somebody maybe be more comfortable hearing it from them? No, no. Well, we're going to turn we around. Just, we just can't have anybody back there. There's so much heavy equipment going okay. on, it's just not safe. Okay. That's the whole deal. There's no big secrets. The mess is mostly cleaned up. They're building the railroad tracks and that's it. The day after Murphy said it was almost cleaned up, I caught a ride with my buddy Tom Hutchings and amateur videographer Corey Chow. The wreckage we photographed was nowhere near cleaned up. When he threatened us with the FBI and the FRA and the sheriff and arrest, my suspicions grew and I felt like I really needed to see for myself. Today's Thursday, November 28, 2013, Thanksgiving Day. I'm headed over to Aliceville, just below Aliceville, to the site of the uh, Bakken Crude train wreck. We're going to deploy a product called Opflex Eelgrass. Uh, with this product, we sink it to the bottom, and it'll actually absorb any hydrocarbons that may be in the water column as opposed to what just floats on the surface. We got our samples packed away and put on ice, but decided not to go down to the wreck site due to all the heavy construction and the train debris that was still laying around the tracks. I did return, however, on December the 27th after an article ran in the Tuscaloosa News where ADEM had proclaimed success in the cleanup and containment of this oil. It had rained shortly before, so the water was up, but there was oil inside the boom, outside the boom. It was outside the screening, in the marshland, and we even found it below the old Providence Church Road. There was a heavy rainbow sheen on the water, and the absorbent pom-poms that they had put in looked to me more like they were repelling the oil as opposed to absorbing it. There was oil inside the containment, Outside the containment, there was a heavy smell of oil in the air, and you could see it along the banks where it looked like it might be coming out of the dirt. I returned again on January the 4th, only to find out that the conditions had gotten worse. You could see that oil was weeping up out of the ground in places, but this is nothing like what I'd find when I returned a week later. On January the 11th, I returned once again to find large pools of oil floating on top of the water. The little booms were absorbing nothing. It looked like nobody had been here in weeks. As far as maintenance on the site, I couldn't see where anything had been done. So I'm going to put this one in right here and slop it around a little bit and see what we come up with. But I'm, I'm reasonably sure this is all going to be from the train wreck at all. And it's coming up out of the ground. You can see it coming up out of the ground. Look how quick the opleg sucks it up out of the water. You can see the oil going up into the opleg. Now you can see where I put this thing. It's picking the oil up out of the water. taking the oil out of the water. Unlike the other boom that's hanging around here, you see where the Opflex 
has absorbed nearly this whole pool of oil in just a matter of a minute or two. Now when I pull it out of there, water will run out of it, but the oil stays in the outplex. You see? Nearly this whole pool of oil is gone. That's with one little bitty indicator. Nothing but water falling out of it, clear water. And you see that pool of oil gone. Far better than this other crap they got out here, that's for sure. I'm gonna let that sit there for just a minute where it's weeping out and soak. And then we'll pick them up and uh, go in. All right, I'm bringing in the two off-flex indicators that we just put in the uh, crude on the side of the railroad track. You can see they're both fairly well saturated. The only thing dripping out of them is water, the oil staying inside the product. So uh, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. I'm gonna put these in sample jars and uh, send them off to the lab. I'm reasonably sure it's gonna come up for Bakken crude. Now I'm not absolutely certain because we hadn't had it tested yet but I believe what we got here is crude. Coming out of the ground right over there on the side of the railroad tracks, exactly like I told the Alabama Department of Environmental Management it was gonna do. Just like in North Dakota, they rebuilt the railroad tracks before they took care of the environmental problem. So now the dirt and the rock and everything that the railroad track is built on is saturated with this oil and it's weeping out of the banks and uh, we have it in a rather large uh, quantity here. So their ongoing success at the uh, Aliceville cleanup is not quite as successful as they want you to believe. On November 8, 2013 at 12.30 a.m., 26 cars of a 90-car unit train carrying light, sweet crude oil from North Dakota derailed south of Aliceville, Alabama with an ensuing release of oil and fire in a wetland near a tributary of Lubbub Creek, a tributary to the Tom Bigby River. The fire was suppressed over several days. Oil containment was achieved timely, and no oil was released outside the wetland. Aggressive recovery operations are ongoing. A unified command was established with EPA, local government, and EPA investigation as to the cause of the derailment is being conducted by the federal government. Lance LaFleur, director of the Alabama Department of Environmental Management, in a letter to the Alabama Department of Environmental Management Commission on December the 9th of 2013.